Nora Nijelski Eichner, congratulations on being one of our 40 under 40s. What does it mean to you to be a rising star? Uh, you know, it means that we get a little more conversation going about after school. I'm really passionate about the issue and it was actually really exciting to see, to be honored to have a chance to really talk more about uh, the field and what it means for New York State. And this is a really exciting year for after school. I mean, I can't remember any year that we've talked more about the importance of it. Has this been transformative for your work as the executive director of the New York State After School Network? It has been. I mean, there's national attention. In fact, today is a good day for it. Um, the uh, Department of Community and Youth Development in New York City just announced 271 new programs for middle school in New York City. So we're really talking at this point that New York City's commitment is second only to the state of California in terms of the size of their investment in after school. That puts us in a whole different category. And quite frankly, now it's our time to press for the rest of state to get the same opportunities. Um, when, I think when people see what it means for New York City to have these kind of programs, there really will be a huge demand in the rest of state for it. Have you seen a, a shift in the dialogue and momentum in the rest of the state because of what New York City has done? I think New York City is part of it. I also think that we have a governor who really understands. You know, He's invested in extended learning time and community schools. He's really, I think, gotten this idea that the community has to come together if we're going to support the school system. It's you know We can't just keep asking teachers to do more more and more and more. We have to really find other ways of bringing the community to invest. And we have great examples in the rest of state as well. Buffalo doing amazing things right after school. They're on track to, in a couple of years, have after school programs in every uh, public school, in Buffalo public schools. Rochester's been doing amazing after school for the last um, several, like the last decade or so, and they actually have become real leaders in the extended learning time. They're actually nationally recognized now for piloting some very interesting new experiments. So it is in the rest of state. We just need the sort of state, the full state momentum to kind of carry it through the legislature is our, our hope. And, and what advice would you offer to someone who is looking to become an advocate in Albany? How can you effectively influence policy? Sometimes it seems like so dense and arcane and, and difficult to penetrate. Well, I think it's a couple things. One is really do dig in, learn, like know, find people that you respect and ask them for advice. I mean, I learned so much. I got to work for now Assembly Member Shelley Mayer. I worked for um, a colleague, uh, Catherine Granger, another colleague, Julie Marlette. Like, these are people that I really hold as lodestars. They knew their issues. They could really explain the complexities and work, walk you through it. And so that then you learn as an advocate, you have to be able to deliver meaningful information. You have to be able to explain what you're talking about. You have to have credibility. Um, that's a valuable resource. And I think that really is the, the place that a lot of advocates start. If you can deliver something that people find trustworthy, then you really can start moving your issue forward. And it, it sounds like one of the keys, uh, particularly as a young person, for making your way into this business is finding a good mentor. Mm -hmm. Mentors are crucial. I will also credit Joanne Smith, um, who I worked with at Manat. Again, amazing mentor, really, and everything from how do you sort of study a bill, but also how do you have a conversation? How do you engage people? How do you reach out to the media? I mean, all those kinds of conversations are all part of it. And yeah, mentors are such a crucial part to how we all learn to do our job. And um, what has been your best day on your job so far, your proudest achievement here in Albany? Oh, that's a tough one. Um, I think, uh I think actually getting, you know, we had these moments where these after school providers that I work with, they're so dedicated and they're really in their programs. They can tell you everything about their kids and what they do. And they're terrified to talk to their legislators. They don't have any, they're like, well, I don't, I don't know how to do this. And watching them, you know, I'll get these phone calls. I just had a meeting with Senator Ranzenhofer's office. It went great. We talked about all of these things. Like just seeing their excitement as they start to realize that they can impact this process and that they really have something to share that people want to hear about. I think those are the moments that really keep me in this job and keep me excited because I get those calls now increasing with increasing frequency and I suspect I'm going to get a lot more over the coming year because they're getting a little bold and it's been great. Nora, that's very exciting. Congratulations to you and best luck with your work. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it and thank you for the honor.